Hello everybody, this is the Retro Bear back in the pantry of gaming once again to bring you a very, very special video. I've been trailing this for a couple of weeks now on my uh, regular stuff. I've been mentioning it and now it is time to unveil what possibly is one of the best purchases I've ever made, ever, in the world ever. Um, yeah, now I'm built it up beyond, uh, beyond that. You're probably going to think, well, what's the point when you see it anyway? But please do bear with me because this is going to be a, a fantastic... And it's sort of a personal... I hate using that term grail because people use the word grail, don't they? Pick things like this up. Uh, personal sort of achievement, really. Something I've never had before, something I've always wanted, something I'm, you know, never quite managed to be in the right place at the right time for. But now I have got one. Yes, it's a hefty one as well. This may take some time. I should try and be as quick as possible. And we all know how that turns out usually. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you are here for the very first time, thank you very much indeed for stumbling across this video looking for uh, tragic elf accidents. Um, if you are back again once more, thank you very much indeed for your continued support and loyalty. And I hope you enjoy this. Um, yeah, got the old uh, Christmas hats on again. See, Retro Bear branded Christmas hats. See, if anybody wants a Retro Bear branded Christmas hat, get in contact below. Uh, I'm sure we can uh, sign some of these and get them sent out. Had a great response. I did a stream with Big Game Al a couple of week, a couple of days ago. Oh, we Sunday today, aren't we? Sunday the thirteenth today. So yeah, Big Game Al did a stream on uh, Friday the eleventh. I showed these off, and then loads of people wanted them. So um, yeah, great Christmas gifts, I suppose, really for some people, and and you know, Christmas gifts for people you don't like, possibly, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, right. Introductions out the way. Uh, Christmas T-shirt as well. Just say, all I want for Christmas is you. No, I don't. It's pigs in blankets. I love these t-shirts Mrs Bear gets me they're great they really are so uh, yeah and, it's, and you know I suppose really well yeah I, I, she, she bought me this t-shirt so I'm not sure whether the message is for her saying that she doesn't want me for Christmas she wants pigs in blankets or I want pigs in blankets either way pigs in blankets are very heavily involved it depends on who wants who who gets them first I say I expect anyway right Christmas aside, let's move on to this because this is fantastic and um, it's going to take a while to get through, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. As you may have noticed through my videos in November, I've been poking around on eBay, which is always a bad idea. You're never quite sure what you're going to find on there. You end up falling in a rabbit hole and you end up buying stuff that you probably really didn't want to buy or perhaps would have thought twice about buying. Now, most people's excuse on that is they're, they're drunk when they go on eBay. It's a new phenomenon. I know people get drunk on going eat. Go and do something else. Go and get drunk and you know, people don't get drunk and steal traffic cones anymore. Then they go drunk and they go and buy expensive games on eBay. And you know I'm looking at you know you know exactly who you are. So my excuse is I've got no excuse. I'm sober when I'm doing all this. So I was poking around on eBay looking at all the other stuff I managed to pick up. I stumbled across this 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 auction, and I thought, oh, that looks quite interesting. And of course, with with the auctions, I tend to see first of all what the auction is, then what the price is because you know I, I had my ways and means of doing things and when i actually looked at the price of, of this particular item i was like whoa that's quite tasty you know you think that's quite a favorable price i'll tell you what the price is right at the end i'll tell you that it is now i'll tell you when i get there anyway i had a look at this item and i thought oh that's really you know that looks all right so i'm sort of sitting there looking at it and i've got mrs bear sitting next to me so I give her the old nudge you know i said what do you make what do you make of this then? and she had a look at it she goes Hmm, that's not bad, is it? I said, no, no, it's very good. I've always wanted one of those. And she said, yes, you haven't. Yeah. So while we're looking at it, she sort of goes, does a bit of research on it, find out, you know, what it does. And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not bad, that one. She said, you won't find another one for that price. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper than what they go for usually. So I'm sort of sitting there. And it's about half past ten on a, a weeknight. This is not a weekend, that's a weeknight. I think it might have been a th Wednesday or a Thursday, I can't remember. And I noticed his auction had started... Um, it's still got six days and 22 and a half hours to go. So my guess they started it as a seven-day listing. Now, when I first started looking at this auction, it said um, three watchers in the last hour. Now, by the time, ten minutes later, after looking at this auction, uh, that had shot up to 12 viewers in the last hour. And I thought, gee, so, you know, this is going to go sort of thing. Now, there was, a, there was a start price, there was a no reserve on it, and there was a buy it now. And there's also a postage to go. The postage was quite hefty. Um, having seen how it, how it was posted and sent to me, I, I, I don't mind paying that because it was packaged brilliantly, it really was. And I thought, oh. I said, do I want to pay that for postage? And I thought, you know what, so many people are looking at this. I thought, you, know, you know what, stuff it. So I bought it now. Or buy it now, they call it. I've bought it now. <laughs> 
posh way, posh eBay. So I thought there's absolutely no way I'm not going to buy this. So I depressed the button, bought it now, and um, I haven't regretted it since because I've, I've had this out a couple of times. I've tested it as well. Uh, interesting thing about this was they actually showed some photographs of the stuff working, which is good. Um, and, and you know the stuff that they were showing was exactly what it was because there's a lot of there's a couple of things with the with the appliance which would be hard to replicate i suppose possibly or they'd be going to extreme length to sell me something that was duff anyway i've run it it works perfectly fine couldn't be happier with it what is it retro bay get on with it all right all right already it's a giant box you can see there from the logo it's got atari it is there we go some people would say that would be an improvement on the usual visuals on this channel. You can go and sod off if that's the case. Right, there we go. So, it's an Atari ST 520 STFM. Now, uh, the STFM FM means that it's fully modulated, which means that you can plug it into the telly and you won't have to run a, a, a different cable through it. The reason I mention that is because I've got an Amiga um a 500 with a, a tv modulator with a giant bit of sort of like plastic about that big sticks at the back of your telly so it picks at the back of the amiga which enables you to plug your amiga into the television you don't need a monitor otherwise it's a monitor so this goes straight to the telly works absolutely if i bought an rgb to, to a composite cable so i can do some recording off it and then found out that me recording device there doesn't appear to it doesn't want to do anything with i don't know, it just doesn't like 8 bit or 16 bit stuff it doesn't do mass system mega drive super nintendo nes all this so I'm not sure what. I think it may be the case. I'll have to connect a VHS to it. That's another story for another time. So unfortunately, I can't provide you with any game footage in this. But yeah, now that is the box. Now they sent this packed in another box. Okay. So this is the original box for it. It's got, it's got the inserts in there as well. So the polystyrene inserts are inside. Do you want me to show you in case you don't believe me? Why would you not believe me? We, we know each other very well by now. There you go. Polystyrene inserts. There we go. So they're in there and all the stuff I'm about to show you was packed into this box which was then packed inside another box which is very well secured and then sent through that way now let's show you the machine now you'll notice there is um, a glaring fault with it I tell you something it is it is not a light machine in the slightest there we go now the more initiated amongst you will notice there's a key missing which appears to be there not to worry they've included the key as well uh, it looks like the actual stalk itself is broken, so what we're going to have to do is take this apart. Uh, I think I've read on the, in on, on the internet. If you heard of the internet, it's a very useful thing to, to find out, to remember these sort of things and repair them. Uh, we have to take the whole thing apart and then just put the new casing in, but that, uh, that stalk is actually broken as such. One thing I've never noticed about the ST as well is the function key is actually just sort of press in like that. It's a cool function, isn't it? This is incredibly clean as well. There's a few scuffs and a bit of dirt around it, but generally speaking, it's in absolutely magnificent condition. And it weighs a bloody ton. So yeah, 520 STFM. There's the back of it, so you can see there as well with all the things in place. Um, one thing I don't like about it, which is you can see there, probably just there, that port down the bottom there, which if I can balance it on my shoulder like a parrot. No, I won't. Um, down there, you've got the joystick and the mouse port, which is a very, very strange place to put them. Not sure I'm overly happy with them being there. You've also got bits and pieces down the side here. Um, Port controllers there and expansion port for various sort of things. I don't know all beyond that. And then obviously about the across the back you've got your port, you've got your on-off button. There's a reset button as well, which is very, very useful. Um there's a power lead cable as well. Runs off the old kettle lead, I think. I'm not sure whether it had a power brick to go with it. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. That's not included with this. There's a lead with it there. And all sorts of ins and outs to go with it. Oh god, that weighs a ton that does. Now a friend of mine had one of these at school. A couple of people had one shortly afterwards, and then I got an Amiga, and everybody was laughing at me. Oh, you got an Amiga, everybody else got STs. Ah. And then 12 months later, everybody else had Amigas, and this guy who was taking the mic had an ST. So Chad Saunders is watching. I've got one eventually, mate. I found one. 30 years later. Um, yes, yeah, so I've never owned one of these. I've always wanted to have one. I don't know why. Um... But it's just been one of those sort of things. It's up there, sort of like with a PC, en original PC engine, um, and an Amstrad CPC four six four. Just, just things I've never had before. But I've all, always wanted to. And I've got a PC engine mini now, which is something. Um, but maybe one day I'll get an Amstrad. I don't know. 
so yeah and everything is perfectly in order it works the keys work everything fine turns on fine powers on fine loads fine the disk drive works perfectly okay i've loaded about six or seven of these different games down here and they all work absolutely fine um yeah fantastic really really fantastic with that so it works beautifully i'm going to put that over there because it's very very heavy and it was, i said now just remember i said everything that i'm going to show you now was packed inside this box which is brilliant because in terms of storage this is fantastic <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic i'm not going to show you the, the the power lead i'm not going to show you the rgb to composite cable i bought afterwards uh which didn't cost me about eight quid i bought the key which i think was i think Clay, oh, mrs bears bought the key which didn't cost about four quid so basically 12 pounds of extra to go on top of it i'll factor that in at the end and tell you how much i paid for it so that's brilliant what else was included well we got these now younger viewers may not know what that is that's a joystick you know you've got joy pads now and in future if you're watching this in the future we've got mind control this this is what we used to use originally what make is it it's um it's an archer i've got quite a f i've got quite a few of these it looks like a quick shot doesn't it it looks like a quick shot too everybody knows what a quick shot looks like it looks like one of them and it's got the old uh, rapid fire on it as well so one of those i've got loads of joysticks so i don't really need them all this one here I'm, I'm sort of less convinced about i'm not even sure what brand this is um it's a radio shack one but it looks horrible absolutely horrible fire button on top listen to that that doesn't sound very good one down there which is clicky as anything um is there a rapid fire on it no this is also an archer as well by the looks of it but yeah I'd, i thought more of them naff spectrum joysticks that sugar made when he bought um, uh, but he bought spectrum but no it's not so yeah they've got the old suction pads but they're in they're in good condition and they both work they both work so i can't complain about that whoops not the microphone people listen with the earphones are going <laughs> um there's a mouse in there as well which has got the customary old white paint mark on it why why have mice got white paint marks on them i don't know that isn't a joke there isn't a punchline to it they just seem to have but it's tip x or not i don't know um i'm guessing those ports underneath you know i said but the, the, the control ports under there because obviously a computer that size you'd leave it out in those days that, that would be sort of left you know where, where your pc would be now or your laptop um if you've sort of moved on from there you'd sort of leave it on the computer table so that would be where you sort of put something like that and it'd be left out all the time you don't like me get it out play some games put it away again very very strange there was now uh now we, we get onto the software this is what people want to say software my god the amount of software that was with this was was again what made it absolutely um you know one of those sort of essential purchases because when you pay this much money you want to get a, a good starter kit you know back in the day that would have cost you brand new sort of 303 to 400 quid um with a load of software if you bought an amiga around the same time like, like my dad did you're paying 400 quid for an amiga and three games and if you wanted the, the educational software which he did you're paying another 100 pounds he's paying 500 pounds for amiga with three games and a bit of software and, and some educational software which nobody used waste of money waste of money dad this here you, you this pack was like you know the atari pack was like loads of software with it which i'll get to in a second and it was much much better value but there's a story behind that which i'll get to you like the stories so i've got here software now sadly only four of these games have got boxes a bit disappointing but the condition of this first one is fantastic anybody saw my amiga pickups last week when i showed you that pga tour golf which looked like it had practically been untouched for 30 years. This one is not far off it. This is Powermonger. Now there we go. Now look at that box there. Shines. It's a, well, there is one there, yeah, slightly sort of ripped there at the top corner. You see that there? Slightly sort of ripped there. But yeah, this is a follow the Populous. Yeah, from the makers of Populous Bullfrog software, it actually opens up like that. This is the inside of an ST box. So you can see, look at that manual. That manual looks in such good condition there's a disc in there as well incidentally i have checked all the discs there is no disc rot on any of these and i did get caught out of about 10 years ago with a load of amiga stuff which unfortunately about 50 percent had to go in the bin because the the disc when you pull back the plastic uh, the um, plastic the metal clip um you could just see there was sort of like there was perishing in there so obviously the disc had rotted everything everything on in here is clean perfect so we've got the manual we've also got 
extra controls as well which goes with that so but again they don't look as if they've been used much i mean look at that there ah, that's a little, little bit of dog earring but you know for, for a 30 year old manual and it's got the warranty cards in as well that's it yeah look, electronic arts registration card fantastic and what's that is there as well a book of secrets a gateway into new worlds a power monger strategy guide they had strategy guides and accessory disc back in back in 1990 1991 i think it was uh, they don't put the years in the back of these and there's the back of the box anyway if that's your sort of thing great it's not my sort of thing i've got to be honest with you but you can tell an awful lot by people by, by, by the games you buy off them and the stuff that came with it which will give you an idea what the second game is all about again a game i never actually played um this is megalomania from image works and sensible software as i know it's the name down the bottom there i think a friend of mine played this quite a lot um and again he was he was very sort of um interested now again see it's got got a plastic bag in this is it the original plastic bag i'm not entirely sure it could be it could be but it's got the discs in there um is it two discs yeah two discs game yep and also again that manual look at that really is in very very good condition very very good condition and again you now feel a sort of like an obligation to sort of um look after these things someone has taken great care and attention looking after this for 30 years it's your turn now don't don't mess it up and there's the back of it again so again it's a very sort of similar type game uh you know same, same sort of vein as power monger would be sort of creating worlds and creating tribes and things there's a lot of games like that there was a game called tribes ironically uh look at the one called, i can't remember what the other one was called as well another one very very popular at the time but yeah lots of things like that people were, were playing those sort of games a friend of mine used to play that quite a bit showed you a load of flights i showed you some flight simulators and some submarine simulators from the great people at micropro software well they're at it again with f19 stealth fighter look at that and i tell you something that is not a that's not a light box that is not a light box slip case i'll show you the back of that as well Have a look there. that's what flight simulators used to that's what people used to sort of get very excited about back in the day if you like the old um um you know sort of accuracy in the flight simulators that's the sort of thing you go the great thing about this is the manual look at that there yep another war and peace effort <laughs> Oh, amazing the size of these sort of things we've got great black discs here with some pink writing on so we've got three of those all together uh, you may remember from last time there was like a keyboard overlay well good news is there's another one as well which has been punched out for the Atari ST so we know it's the right machine so you just put that over your keyboard and you carry on uh, we've got more warranty information with a warranty card some extra information and we do love a good map on this pro on, the, on this channel well guess what there's plenty in here so there's the arctic ocean and there's another one on the other side what's that one central europe which by the time this goes out we may or may not be a part of i don't know oh libya that's just controversial isn't it so <laughs> yeah x marks gaddafi's house and there's a persian gulf so uh, yeah it's all um it's all all very much of its time i think but again very well looked after and just just some amazing stuff and i remember seeing again like with the other games i showed off in the amiga pickups you see games like that advertised all the time in the magazines you know these aren't my sort of games I, I, when i say we had an amiga i had f18 interceptor which came with that um computer to start with get kind of batman and the new zealand story and whatever else it was and and they just weren't my sort of games and i have to say they're still not my sort of games but i've got them now and then last one which was in there which i think possibly was a follow-up to jimmy white's whirlwind snooker uh, this is archer mclean's pool i'm not sure is that the original release yes it is i think it is because virgin did release some games on the white label and again not much to show you in this one disc called pool another giant manual look at the size of that um and also uh, some cheap christmas presents because i can get i can send it out to people now uh, a pound off amiga and atari st games at w8 smith from rally and if you're really quick you can get down there before the 31st of march 1993 before these expire you should be all right 
<laughs> about, about 20 quid's worth of vouchers here. 50p in a pound. 50p off an Amiga and Atari ST version, you know, version games. Yeah, so I'm just paying 23.99 rather than 24.99 for them. How on earth did they think that they were... Um... <laughs> I did say one per offer or something. Yeah, you got to spend. You had to spend more than nineteen pounds ninety nine, one voucher per purchase. So yeah, so all those twenty four ninety nine games, twenty three ninety nine, mate. Back in the day, you were the king of sort of picking games up. Unbelievable. So there we go. So those are the box games that came with it. I've also got manuals, a pack of manuals they sent me because there's a lot of games. Oh, I'm giving the game away. There's Lemmings, Lemmings. We've got Lemmings in here. We may have. Um, yeah, so there's a big pack of, of manuals uh, for game boxes which no longer exist, but they've got the discs for them. So, again, probably about 15, 20 or so in there, maybe. That's good, isn't it? So, so again, you can show, okay, they haven't got the discs in it, the, the box anymore, but they've still got the manuals. So, again, somebody's looked after it, nearly looked after it. Well, they haven't looked after it, it's brilliant condition. Brilliant condition. One thing I do need to look into, just out of interest, those who, who may know a bit more about STs and mine, there is, of course, the 520 and there's a 1040. And the 1040 is the expanded 1 meg version. This, like the Amiga 500, was 512 meg when it first came out. 512 meg, that basically powers your calculator on your phone now. And um, so I'm not quite sure whether this has been expanded or not, because with the Amiga 500, you could, there's a port underneath, you take it out, plug in 512k extra memory, you've got a 1 meg machine, which was basically the standard. I'm not sure whether that one's been upgraded. I think there may it's less compli more complicated than the Amiga one. You can actually upgrade them to four meg, but you'd have to sort of take it apart and do a bit of soldering. So I need to look into that and see whether it has actually been expanded or not. I don't know. Hard to tell. There might be something during the the, the load of the BIOS which I can have a look at and, and see if it tells me what's on there. I don't know. Now, so much software came with this. It is unbelievable. Some, as you see, original games. Some. Um, original games out boxes and because we love a good backup on this channel loads of backups so I'll show you the backups first because there's lots of them now like I said I've got backups for my Amiga I've not got backups I've got a few odd cassettes I've picked up over the years for um, the 64 and the Spectrum which has sort of ended up in my collection but generally speaking um, uh, even with the, the modern stuff like the Wii and you know what have you? Uh, I've got a, a disc full of ROMs for the Mega Drive, for the Mega Drive Mass System, NES, SNES. But I try and keep my collecting to the two original boxes, which is why I've got so much of it. With these here, this was sort of a bit of a bonus. It comes with some original games, but it also has got some backups in there as well. And to be honest, there's a lot of them, and there's quite a lot of games on there. I'm thinking that's another reason for buying it. It's a great software setup. I think probably my Mega stuff is probably about 70 30 in favour of um, box games against backups. This one is very much backups over everything else, but to be honest with you, I don't give a toss. 30 years later, yeah, whatever. You're going to expect to fit sort of stuff like this up, so let's do these backups in. Um, and they've all come in bags. They've, they've put loads of these discs in bags. Everything was bagged up. Got bubble wrap to cover the bubble wrap wrapped around the, the computer, around the cables. Oh, man. And remember, remember, all I'm showing you, it was inside that box. All those other things there were actually strategically placed around the box and these blank bags of discs. And it was all packed in one. I've, I've unboxed about four times since and I've never quite got it right. Putting it all back together again. I managed to get it sorted. I can get it and close the box. It doesn't like, you know, look stupid. But I've never managed to get it as good as they did. So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try and read some of these out because you may not see them. Because these are back up. So we've got uh, James Pond and Lotus. So I'm guessing that's probably... Uh, the very first James Pond game, and also possibly the very first Lotus game. Some of these, like I said, I've got so many of these to get around and play, and I haven't done it. Uh, Live and Let Die and Rally Cross. Um, do, 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 I think that says. I can't read really, I can say that. It says it's Robocop 2, possibly. It could be Turbo Cop 2. I think it is Robocop 2. I played a demo of on the Amiga. Uh, we've got uh, Barbarian 2, which had Maria Whitaker in it. We've mentioned that before on this channel. And also Last Duel, which I think I've got on the 64, which I think is a shoot 'em up. Oh, great game. Buggy Boy, 
which I've um, played loads on the Amiga and finished loads of times on it, and Ikari Warriors as well, which I think I've only played on the 64 and the C16. Absolute classic Speedball 2. Ice Cream, Ice Cream, Thunder Thighs, and Get Ready! Uh, we've, got, we've got Beyond, 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 Beyond the Ice Palace, Thrust and Thundercats. Now, some of these may crop up later on. You'll understand why. But she's just sort of putting you in the picture about that one. Um, I can't even read that one. It's got Aura Jewel and I think what it says, Red Sram Rising. But I've got absolutely Red Storm Rising, maybe? Not Lead Storm, Red Storm Rising. I don't know. I've never even heard of either of those two games. So uh, we'll have to see what it is. Uh, Dogs of War. I think was like an Ikari, a Commando Ikari Warriors Rambo 3 type game. Uh, and then we've got Tournament Golf. And I was thrilled to see this one on there. Puznik. Because I've talked about Puznik and plotting on here before. And played those on the Amiga. It's fantastic to get Puznik in there. I think actually Puznik was one of those games I had on the Amiga. Which had to uh, be thrown away because of the disc rot. Uh, bag, num bag number two please. There's loads of these. My goodness mate. And it's like two or three games on some of these discs. So... Um, ah oh man, we yeah, just so much stuff here. I should have counted all these up before I started. Damn. Someone keep counting at home. So go back over, watch that last bit now, and, and add them all up and tell me how many games are in here. Because um, I'd like to know. Uh, so I've got uh, Robocop, Renegade, and Shanghai. I was hoping I was going to say Shinobi, but it doesn't. So we've got Renegade on there. Uh, now this says WBC Boxing Manager. I have a suspicion that is World Championship Boxing Manager, which was, uh, was it Goliath Games who did that? I had it on the Amiga. I'm hoping it's the same game where you like, it's, it's, you're like a boxing manager and you sort of train, you know, train fighters up and look after them and put them in the ring and um, tell them what to do and it sort of plays out through text and sound effects and things. It's brilliant. It's great fun. It really is. I haven't played it since I did uh, my Amiga originally. I'm hoping that is the same game. I really am, because that's, that's going to be a, a game of my youth. Uh, we've got MiG-29 Fulcrum, Hard Driving 2, and Dev Pack 2.23. I appreciate these aren't looking very good on here, but... Uh, well, you know, uh, Blood Witch, uh, Postman Pat, Martin, I hope you're watching this, mate, because there's a, a game I'm sure you'd like to play there, and Indiana Jones. I have no idea whether that's Temple of Doom, which I hope it isn't, uh, uh, or Last Crusade, which I hope it is. Uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus, uh, Conflict Snow Strike, oh god, Na Nano Tracker, Game Tracker, and Virus 3. So, there's some utilities on there as well. These might just be discs which people have sort of like um, cracked and sent out and sort of got passed around and passed around and sort of just ends up on these sort of things here. Super League Soccer, don't think I've heard of that one before. Uh, oh, I mentioned it earlier, Commando. Uh, Switchblade and Verminator. In Commando, game on a 64, I played many, many times. Uh, AFT2, which I think was a flight simulator, Final Conflict and Vaccine. You'll notice these dis by the way, old people, like myself, uh, which I seem to be tired with a certain brush now. Little Woods discs. Remember Little Woods? They used to be on the high street. You buy anything at Little Woods, including discs by the looks of it. Uh, God, yeah. Chronorex and Road Wars. Not really overly familiar with either of those two. Uh, it says shoot them up on it. It might be shoot them up construction kit. It may just be a shoot them up. Not a shooter, notice. Not a shmup. It's a shoot them up. Uh, Honda RVF, Dark Side, Savage, and 3D Pool. I think Honda RVS was a, uh, RVF was a bike game. I think I had a. God, I had a, there was a Team Suzuki. I think there was one called the Longest Ride or something like that. I can't remember, which is also. Oh, no, no second prize. That wasn't long. No second prize. Team Suzuki, which I, I love playing with the mouse on the Amiga. And at Honda RVF, I think that's another one. Uh, Garfield, Rockford, Mission Genocide, Death Strike, and The Empire Strikes Back. So, Vector Graphics come to the Atari ST. That's brilliant. I had Star Wars on the Amiga, which I absolutely loved. I had Return of the Jedi on the Amiga, which was a bit of a mess. And now, 
I've got Empire Strikes Back, which I think I played in, in, a, in a cafe in Blackpool when I was about 12, 12, 13 years old. Utterly terrible at it. Some more Littlewoods discs here. Uh, Populous 2 demo. You'll notice I'm crossing out there. Uh, kick off World Boxing Championship Manager saving games on there, so nothing missing out. Um, M1 Tank Platoon, which I think I had on the Amiga, didn't I, in the last video? Uh, Batman, Blood Witch, and something beginning with D, which looks like Dard. I can't know. I wonder if that's Batman the movie. Mm, I hope so. We meet again after all these years. F29 Retaliator, another flight sim. More disc with loads of stuff on here. Pac Mania, Solomon's Key, International Karate Plus, Pepsi Challenge, which nobody seems to remember, but was a great puzzle game from back in the day. Uh, Harrier SM, Metro Lines, and Hellfire. Now, again, I don't know whether these are the games. I didn't try these particular ones. I tried some other ones. So these might be saves. I don't know. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping these actual games on here, but I'm thinking, how do you get so many games onto a disc? I know capacity-wise it was a bit different back then. But double sided, don't forget, don't forget the, the ST had a double sided disc drive. So a lot of these things are double sided, whether they've got more space in them, I don't know. Uh, Dragon Breed and International 3D Tennis. I think Dragon Breed was an arcade conversion. Uh, and there's some um, demonstration discs here, some ST format cover discs. So there's a demo of Rolling Ronnie. There's also a Spirograph thing on there as well. I know. I'll speak to you about some interesting Spirographs. Um, spreadsheet, K Spread 2. Always useful to have a spreadsheet. Al, you can put your games on that, mate. On that bit of paper you got. Um, Revenge of the Mutant Camels, free, along with Stereo Master to create music. Now, I don't know about you, but when I put the ST on and listen to the music, the music sounded terrible on it. The Amiga, obviously the Commodore stuff had so much better in terms of a sound chip. People actually used um, STs for music production, but the sound chip on it, I mean, it's you know 16-bit graphics but it's like 8-bit sound it's always always disappointed me about the st the sound on it uh, what have we got here baby joe and big eye and populous 2 demonstration and some other utilities loads of utilities and stuff on there what's in this one here uh, fire and ice exclusive level super boot 7.4 um and some other stuff as well I used to give these away on free on front magazines, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. And sound and vision, uh, so you can use um, top music sequencing package and an art package called Canvas as well. So, there, so I'm never probably going to use any of those. Why would I? Um, because you have such things as tablets and phones, you can do all that sort of stuff for you. Still more, there's five of these bags, this is bag number four. Try and whiz through these best I can. Elite. You, say, you can't see that there? You can't say it's at the top. Uh, elite. It does say Elite. I can guarantee it. Elite. Yes, there it is. We've got it there. <laughs> elite. Um, ST Copy. So if I want to copy any discs, there's a copying device there. Always useful to have. Backup creators, as we call them. Um, Football Director 2, scribbled on in pen. It's probably about the first shoddy thing I've seen throughout this. Prince of Persia. I never actually played the remakes and the updates. I never actually played the original game at the time. This one appears to be blank. It's always good to have a blank disc here, knocking around just in case. That one also appears to be blank as well. Uh, as does the rest of these. Blank. But this one's got a number on it, 29. So I'm wondering if there's anything on those because that one's got 25 and nothing written on the front. So it might be worth investigating. Falcon which I think is actually a, a title of the game, if I remember correctly. Disc number 23. And this one I was really thrilled to see. APB, which is a conversion of an old um, arcade uh, cabinet. Old car. I never played it. Um, I had to sort of go around trying to catch criminals. But I never played it. I saw it at the time, but never actually. And the last, last one of backup soon. As you see, there's loads of discs here. There's loads of stuff. There could be anything on these. Uh, Lombard RAC Rally, which I remember seeing at the time where we raved about it and said how good it was. It, it looks very much of its age now, I have to say, having played it. Uh, Turbo Cup, which I think was a racing game. 
What was Hardball and a demonstration of Earl Vera? Now, I, how do I know that? Because I had that disc years ago for the Amiga, cut it off of Zero magazine. I had that disc. It now appears to have Midwinter on it, which is probably a slight improvement over Hardball, because it wasn't the greatest baseball game on the Amiga. Disc here with four games on it. Kickoff, no exclusive, great battles, and a rugby league boss. There we go. Kickoff. Brilliant. What's this one? Savage. Savage Need Search. I have no idea what that is. You probably can't see it off. There we go. Savage Need Search. I have no idea what that is. Crazy Cars. That can go straight in the bin. Because that was never a good game on any system. Uh, Altered Beast. Which I hope is a damn sight better than the Commodore 64 version. Paperboy. Which I hope is a damn sight better than the Commodore 64 version. Uh, a saved disc game. Kenny Dalgleish saved disc. Which I hope... The real game isn't actually included amongst all this lot. Football Manager, he said FM2, so I think it might be Football Manager 2, which was the follow-up to Football Manager, not the one we know now, but the original one from Kevin Toms. Uh, Supercars, SAS Combat and Italy 90. I have some fond memories of Italy 90, not just the game, not the, well, not the football tournament, but the, the game. I have some fond memories of that. Had it on the Amiga, used to play it all the time. Dead easy, but I used to love playing it. Uh, Dragon Masters. I have no idea what that is. And this one was, this was the worst disc I've got actually here because the bit of thing he doesn't actually sort of stay shut, which is a real shame. But it's one of these games which where which came from Zero magazine where they sort of put an Amiga game on the disc and the ST on the disc. So whichever machine you had, you plugged it into it, played that particular game. It's got recoil for the ST, but a look at that underneath it. It says Merv the Merciless. Now, I... <laughs> If anybody else has played Merv the Merciless, let me know, because I think it was a public domain game. It was the weirdest game you've ever played. You move your character around the screen, and the, and the, the small window moves around, so you have to sort of follow the window, otherwise if you, if you don't follow the window, you get squashed. Got some stupidly bonkers music in it. There's the Neighbours theme tune in there. It plays this really sort of seriously mocking tune when you're dead. Oh, man. I've got to get my Amiga out and just play that and see if it works. I'm hoping that doesn't detract too much from that. That almost made it worth what I paid for it. No, I don't think it did. No. Now, so then we're on now to the original discs. So we've got some original discs here, which is brilliant. And I'll go through some of these and show you those. Robocop. Absolutely fantastic. Two discs was Robocop because you put that in and it loads the game up and it tells you to put that game disc in and play the game. The Amiga was um, one disc only and I had a white disc Amiga as well, so nice to see you've got a white disc ST there. Uh, what have we got? Ah, oh, man. Player Manager. I used to play that all the time on the Amiga. It, it's basically uh, a management simulation tacked onto the kickoff game engine. And I, I, that's my childhood right there in that day. I was so, when I saw this, I thought, oh my God. I don't think, I'm not the only person who played player manager when I was younger, but man. Uh, you before mentioned Kenny Dalgleish, soccer manager. Not a very good game at all. Um, we've got Ghostbusters 2, and there's three discs to that. So that's four. Four discs for Ghostbusters 2. Man. I remember having to play a demo of that on the Amiga. God, it was it was difficult that first level, got dropping down the, the sewer to pick up the um, collect samples of the use. It was incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. Some people say it's not quite that bad a game now, but the last level sort of spoils it. Oh, mm. uh, jeez, a uh, Gazza's Super Soccer? Anybody? No. Oh dear. <laughs> Gaza 2, anybody? <laughs> Game so bad they made two of them. I don't know why they did. Um, Turbo Outrun. And there's an interesting one. Turbo Outrun. Discs 1 and 2 and 3. How did they manage to make three discs of that? Probably why, because this will explain it. This is Sega, uh, Super Mario Grand Prix. It does actually say double-sided, which probably means there's only one disc in there. He's um, something else. But yeah, Super Mario Grand Prix. Never played it outside the, um, the arcade or the Mega Drive. So it'll be interesting to see how that works on, on this, this CC. Now these look like they've come from this, a compilation called Soccer Stars. It's Kickoff 2. Brilliant, because I've now got Kickoff, Kickoff 2 and Player Manager. 
so we can see how kickoff two compares to sensible soccer and also Emlyn Hughes's international soccer which I know is nowhere near as good on the eight bit as it was on the six uh, on the nowhere near as good on the sixteen bit as it was on the eight bit. Brilliant. And then yes, it is in here. We we didn't we sh did sort of um, show you back up earlier. This is Batman the movie. I'm looking forward to revisiting that because I haven't played that since I had it on the Amiga. I used to finish it with alarming regularity back in the day. Interesting how my skills have improved. Now finally, so that's what I don't know, eight bags of discs, seven bags, six bags of discs, whatever we've got. Another one. Oh, another one. Sorry, another bag of discs. I was going to launch into my final final bit then, but no. Hang on, stay with me a bit longer. You see the manual, now see the game, Lemmings. How can you have a 16 bit computer and not have Lemmings? If you haven't got Lemmings, oh no, it's more Lemmings. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember this one, Mindscape, uh, Captive. I'm sure the Retro Man Cave's got Captive on the Amiga 600 in his last video. Pretty sure he has. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Retro Man Cave, going across and have a word with him because he doesn't know who I am. No idea. Strider 2, not Strider 1, slightly disappointing. And then three discs for the Untouchables, which is a game I have never played. I've always wanted to own a copy of the Untouchables. I now have it. I'm pretty sure I've got a copy of Untouchables on, on other systems. I'm sure I've got... I must have it on the Commodore 64. I must have. So those were all the those bags of discs there. And then I mentioned right, right back at the very start of this video about the cost of an ST and what you got with it. When the ST was made, it got packaged together with a, this big box of software. And when we went to buy either an ST or Amiga, when we, when we, we dad took me and my sister and mum to go and look at this thing the guy who was selling it told us he told us he said i said don't don't bother about all that software that comes with the st it'll last you about a month he says this is going to be a better machine for you so obviously my dad fell for it didn't he now i did a bit of research into this now the, the power pack as it was called given away with the st it actually sort of annoyed a lot of developers and and, and retailers and, and and sort of game makers because the pack of software that's given away with it meant that people had loads of software to start with, so they didn't need to go out and buy games straight away. That's what I heard, and read, so I heard, read about. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. But what we've got here, and I, this, this, this sort of sold it for me again, although it hasn't got the box and, and the bits and pieces that came with it, we've got the original Power Pack games that were given away with this ST. I mean, wow. And, and you'll see what I mean when I talk about the software that's in there. So in these two bags, or the power pack software that was given away free at the start. I mean, that is just brilliant. I mean, wow. Wow, Gene, wow. Yeah, yeah, Gene's speechless. I mean, it's it's amazing. So what have we got? Now, like I said, some of these games may already be been spoken about. And they, they may be saved games, they may be backups, I don't know. But some of these have got sort of like, they've got all the, the disc numbers on them being labelled A, A through numeric, uh, sorry, uh, alphabetically, whatever you brilliant so we've got eliminator nebulous and pac-mania pac-mania i love pac-mania got pac-mania up there on the mega drive it's that good we've got star glider um overlander and super huey which i have no idea what that is i mentioned this in my last video about never never actually owning a physical copy of this game well one you know like like buses one comes along and so does another one space harrier space area on the st like wow super hang on again a game i've never owned until a few months ago when big big game al sent me one on the mega drive now i've got it on the st gauntlet 2 i've got this on the 64 i've got this on the game boy oh man ah oh, and this game again i never owned a physical copy i've got i've got a version on the pc engine mini and now i've got r type i know it's on the st it's probably not the best machine to have it on but it's on there and again, another one, Afterburner. You can see why people, you know, the same people didn't go out and buy games because the amount of stuff you've got in here, you think, I wouldn't need to go anywhere and play any of these games, would I? Would I need to buy any more games for that? I have absolutely no idea. There's a couple of utilities as well. We've got Music Maker. There's also Organizer, which is probably very useful. And a language disc, just in case I forget what I'm talking about. And there's four, uh, five others in here. I'd, I'd know the names of, but I don't know much about them. Star Ray and Star Goose. Uh, Black Lamp, which I think was a, a platformer. And Outrun as well. Again, Outrun. 
not a great conversion but i never played it on here we've got another cruddy conversion i used to play the hell out of this on the amiga and finish it every single time double dragon brilliant double dragon three games on here we've got bombusel which i've got so many times on the commodore 64 is unbelievable there's bomb jack sean eddie bomb jack and uh zenon the original version of zenon not zenon 2 but zenon and the last game i'm going to show you which is the game i don't particularly like so i've slugged it off a couple of times recently that's predator so there we go so packs of discs everywhere we've got one two three four five six seven eight ten packs of discs we've got four original games we've got all the manuals to go with you've got two joysticks a mouse the leads the box the computer so what did i pay for it top five this is top five purchases i've made i bought you know i think about i bought my original gamecube um i bought my original playstation one which i don't have anymore um my original gamecube i don't have anymore my xbox um And this probably slots in around about in, 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 that, in that top five. But I think it's just ahead now of something I've paid. Anyway, the auction was on at 60 quid. So I start the auction at 60 quid, no reserve. The buy it now, 100 nicker. 100 pounds, 100 sobs, a ton, you name it, whatever it is. 20 quid postage, so all that there, 120 quid. Which. You know, I, I don't know. If, I think that's. I've been looked around. I think that's a pretty good price, especially for something with which, which the machine is in such good condition. It's come with the original box and the, the original um, polystyrene inserts. It's four original games in there. There's, you know, a shed ton of these. Loads of software to go with it, and and it, it's all in really, 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 really good condition. Considering something like this is going to be thirty plus years old. Um, this would have been around the power pack would have been around at the time that I was buying the Mega, so that was 1989, and we were looking at that you know months before then. Ah, I, I don't know what to say. I, I I think that's an absolute cracking deal. I really really do. Uh, let me know what you think. I hope some people agree with me. It'd be nice because I've been sitting here grinning like a Cheshire cat for about two weeks since I've had this, but um, I hope it's been worth the wait as well. But I'm really really pleased with that. It's, I think it's money well spent. It's certainly investment in it. It's in great nick. As apart from the key which is missing, but I bought a replacement for that. That's fine. Everything else about it works absolutely brilliantly. Cannot be happier. Um, so yeah, do let me know what you think. And that's the big reveal. That's the last big reveal for 2020. I've been holding that one back since probably the um, the end of November. But find the right time to do it. I hope that you've enjoyed that as much as I have. And it's nice to show something like that off. I know people sort of like, it's a bit of a gimmick, bit of a, you know, sort of a, you know, running joke about all the, the, the tat I buy and things like that. And um, it's actually nice to sit here and show you something nice. It really is. It really is. Um, and it's not something I've owned before, it's something I've always wanted. So I've only got really now a couple of, point, a couple of the sort of machines to go. Maybe we're coming to the end of all this. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm I'm certainly going to be getting this out over Christmas for sure, and, and giving a bit of a a bit of a go because some of this stuff is is especially Batman. Batman. Batman the movie for me was Christmas 1989. <laughs> this is this is this is it. This is right up there with with some of the great things I've got in my collection. And um and also it comes in the box. I put everything back in this box afterwards. Too much swearing and moving around and getting annoyed. But it'll all go back in the box, and I can just put the box away brilliant storage solution and i'm not bought any more games for it yet because there's loads of stuff here i'm going to try and see how long this power pack lasts me for <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls thank you very much indeed for watching it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you i uh, hope you've enjoyed that don't forget to like subscribe comment tick the bell for further video notifications uh, do share the video do spread it around um yeah yeah i'm gonna share the video not say spread it around that sounds a bit you know some sort of disease yes but no no anyway uh, whatever you're doing thank you very much for your time it's been a great pleasure talking to you i will see you again very very soon until then this is the retro bear a very happy retro bear in the gaming pantry saying bye for now <laughs>